Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV. While we are awaiting the sentencing information, we're going to be bringing you updated content that we feel should be placed on the R. Kelly Appeal TV channel for historical purposes. So I was given a clip that one of my commenters on this platform requested I use for a conversation. About two weeks ago, Asriel Clary contacted Fox Soul and asked for an interview. Now, mind you, she contacted them. They weren't seeking her out. Um, so I want you to pay attention to some of the things that she's sharing on this uh, interview. Now, due to copyright issues, I'll be sharing still images of the interview. And then we're going to talk about this in a live premiere. Okay, it's going to be uploaded very soon. So let's listen to the interview. So 17, you meet R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. um, you meet him as a fan. I mean, I'm yeah. assuming like everybody else. Yes, I did. Did you think that he was going to be the end to the business, that thing you'd been fighting for your whole life, that he was going to be the person to help you get there? Honestly, yeah, I did, because I have met a lot of other great artists even before him. And um, so I just thought, like, when I met him and he asked me to audition, it would just be no different. Like, honestly, I was just like, okay, this is somebody they're going to hear me sing. They're going to like it or they're not. And um, that's pretty much what I thought of it. But at 17... I was a 17-year-old. Well, first of all, as a nine-year-old, nine I was in the streets with a latch around my neck. Oh, man. Uh, before I went to foster care, they put me away. But when you were 17, were you a sophisticated 17? Were you a young, hopeful 17? Were you still a daddy's little girl 17? I was actually, like, super, super mature. But I was still very much a child. So I was super naive, super gullible. You know, I didn't work a job. I was... Well, we know, we know you Capricorns don't work a <laughs> job. Happy-go-lucky. So. Very just lucky. I, like just in my own little world you know just living life um so i was just this very simple you know normal teenage you know 17 year old <laughs> would you say at that time happy oh yeah i was definitely very happy and so then you become mentored by r kelly mm -hmm. and then between that point and what point were you just completely away from that happy home that sat down at dinner every night Honestly, I would say, see, a lot of people don't necessarily understand how fast um, stuff, like, escalated. Um, but personally, for me, I just feel like it, it just wasn't about music. And I... Ever? Never. From the beginning? It never. You know, even the people, like, his assistants and stuff, you know, they would try to redirect stuff. So it was a lot of adults that played parts and would let this person, you know, know, like, hey... There are things that you're doing that, you know, should not be happening, like other adults letting him know. And so for me, I just I just felt like, OK, what am I doing if I'm not, you know, doing music? And that's what comes when you are dealing with someone that's very toxic and you're very young. It's so easily it's so easy to manipulate someone. It's so easy to take advantage of someone. And um, for me, I was just naive and I just wanted to sing and I just thought, you know, this is somebody, you know, that can either hear me sing and like me and, you know, connect me with proper people that can help me or, you know, nothing will happen. And so, I don't know, I guess for me, it was just super important to know that I didn't really need anybody to do what I'm doing now, you know. Well, that's, seeing that there's a lot of power in what you're saying, and this is why I'm asking the questions. Um, in your mind, the whole time you still believe you were going to get the help. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, but, I the, mean, but, the, but there was orchestrated effort around you to do yeah. completely different. Yeah, things. unfortunately, yeah. Mm -hmm. but I, the reason why I asked the question is because I saw as your story was unfolding. I mean, as much as we were reporting, I was watching it. Um, a lot of people blamed you and your parents. Yeah, it was almost like. I, I didn't know what that was. Is that just fans who refuse to see the image of their star one way? Or is it easy to just blame women and their parents 
for a man's wrongdoing. I kind of feel like you can never blame a parent, an adult who left their child with an adult. So let's start there. Like that's first and foremost, you know, if you're an adult and you left a child with an adult, it does not fall on anybody else except for that adult that child was left with. Um, and I definitely, you know, also have to just agree with what you said. You know, it's a lot of the backlash that I get are from people that are actually still very much die hard fans of this man like you can literally go on their page and you'll see like their face and this and that and i'm just like okay it makes sense <laughs> it makes sense but um it's unfortunate it really is unfortunate but i just feel like it's a lot of naive people who you know fell in love with someone's artistry and their music and that's not even something that i can take away but right is right and wrong is wrong and you know if you're you know, mentally ill and sick, then you should do everything that you can to fix that. And I just feel like that's just all about accountability. Even me, I had to take accountability. Accountability. Like, I'm here now, but, you know, I made a lot of very careless decisions. I was very young. I was very naive. And even that does, even I have to admit to that, you know? So that's pretty much what it comes down to. So when was it a switch from them orchestrating control over you and and basically lying to you mm -hmm. and def and frauding you into you falling in love with them or did you ever fall in love um i wouldn't necessarily say i was in love because i feel like it was a lot of manipulation mm -hmm. to just keep me there you know we now all know the beauty of love you know gaslighting and love bombing and you know how people can you know take advantage of somebody or just you know anything of that nature so um i feel like it was definitely a lot of that just keeping people there um just manipulating the situation to keep someone there but not necessarily um love now knowing everything we know about miss asri o'clary um i wanted to set the stage to get your opinion about what your beliefs and feelings are relating to her statements here. She's saying that basically she set out to use him. She set out to use him and we do understand. We have the historical proof. We have the documentation. We also have the testimonial um, scripts that were in the, um, in the court dockets that stated that her mother was forcing her to more or less push herself on to Robert Sylvester Kelly. And as you can hear in the beginning of the conversation, she's also saying that she's super, super, super mature. So what does that mean? I know at the age of 17, a lot of us, um, especially creative thinkers, um, people who know how to manipulate, people who know how to play the game, people who have been spoiled, Okay, the majority of those type of people, they seem to always know how to be mature, older than what they really are, because they're acting a part, they're playing a role. And in playing her role, you know, I think we've all done it. So I'm not judging Miss Clary in this instance, but being super, super mature and not working is something that is unbeknownst to me. I've had a job since the age of 15 and a half. So many people around me that was around 15, 16, 17, they were working, you know, grocery stores, pillow factories, um, you know, landscaping, doing little things around to make money. But she just admitted that she was not working. You know, oh, I didn't even have a job. So if you were setting out to use him, you were super mature, you knew what you were doing, and then you go into this mentorship and you state yourself, it wasn't about music, but you put it on to Robert Sylvester Kelly saying that R. Kelly had manipulators all around and this and that. So let's take the definition of a narcissist. We can truly say that a narcissist is a very controlling individual who who sugarcoats things and turns things around to benefit them. Okay. Now, would you say in this instance, say in this instance that Asriel Clary, who is a very super mature individual who knows how to manipulate because she's been doing it for a very long time, probably since the age of birth. Okay. 
if she realizes it wasn't about her music and that she didn't need anyone to get her to where she's at today, why isn't she number one on the billboard charts right now in the music industry? You know, I'm sure Sony and and um, all the universal video uh, platforms would love to have this woman and her ability to sing as a person to as a poster child, if you will, to the whole Me Too movement and every other thing. I think it would be very essential. Why isn't she there? Why isn't she there? Um, these are some questions that I have myself. Now, when you talk about toxicity, the reason why tox toxic relationships work is because it's very familiar to the individual about toxic relationships. So I don't understand how she didn't understand she was in a toxic relationship. Of course, um, you understand toxic understands toxic. And that's the reason why we kind of, she, she talked about gaslighting and she talked about the narcissistic, you know, um, ways of handling the mental illness of toxicity. But what she failed to realize is that toxic knows toxic and it is attracted to toxicity. So she already had toxic behavior coming in in order to be able to even put up with it. Because if you've never been in a toxic relationship, you're not going to deal with it. Or if you've grown from the toxic relationship, you're not going to accept toxicity. So, I mean, what are your views on that? And as far as blaming a parent, an adult left a child with another adult and it is the adult's, you know, um, wherewithal to make sure that they don't step over their boundaries. Yes. A normal, healthy minded adult absolutely would take care of that child in the best interest, but not to the point where an adult talks to an adult father and mother to this guy and says, you can do whatever you want. Now you're planting seeds into this man's mind, not saying that it's right. It's not, it's absolutely not. But you're planting seeds in the mind of a person who in the air in the state of Illinois is allowed to talk to a 17 year old, whether they're 29, 39, 89, 99. You're able to talk to this person. And it's not like she's 12, 11, 8, 7 or a newborn. OK, so we're talking about a 17 year old who is super, super, super mature. And she's saying that she feels that he overstepped boundaries because her parents told him that it was OK to use his daughter, their daughter and just for the career. But when the career didn't happen, or maybe she came in with the whole process of I'm going to be this little, you know, sexy thing. And he said, no, maybe he said no. And she said, OK, fine. You're not going to give me what I want. Watch how I do you. And you can hear it in Asriel Clary's whole personality. In her personality, she even said it with Joycelyn. You should have heard how disgustingly, you know, immature she sounded when she's like, you're sleeping with a minor, you're sleeping with a minor. I mean, she knew what she was doing. Absolutely. She knew. So she sounds to me like she is successfully in a, in a area where she's trying to now flaunt her success. How successful are you? I mean, it sounds to me like she thinks she's reached the pinnacle of success. And she sounds like a fake, a, oh, I made it and I did all this great stuff and she's going to go down in history and everyone knows her. I think she's psychologically taming herself to believe that she is some type of multi-millionaire success story. And she's not, she's not. She admits she never loved R. Kelly. So even when she was there with him at the birthday parties in the house, living as a girlfriend. Now she says this and she's using narcissism as a platform to be successful. So what are your thoughts here? I mean, 
I mean, I just don't know. I just don't know how to see this, how to look at it and how not to get angry at a person who has taken the ability to manipulate an entire world to be someone that sits here and, you know, yes, and, and, and get it. Me, I've always been no matter about that, but my train of thought is this. If you think that you're going to be a success based upon manipulation in any way, shape or form, it's going to backfire through the duration of your career. Eventually, people will see who you are, see through who you are. And the earlier they see who see through who you are the earlier you become less of a success. So thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing to this podcast. And this Azriel Clary conversation, I think is needed for the historical aspects of this channel. And is just going to show and going down in history that the way that people used, abused, and manipulated Robert Sylvester Kelly was right in our faces. And now they're coming out of the woodwork. They are no longer trapped in the closet because he's incarcerated and they can speak their truth. But here's the thing. They're speaking truth against them. They're speaking a lie to themselves and the truth towards Robert Sylvester Kelly. So thank you. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.